You're listening to the Morphology Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to the Morphology Podcast, aka Murph here to share interviews about biking experiences from cyclists who have pedaled to places all over the U.S. Each week we will get to know new people and explore new destinations to ride your bike. As you listen to these adventures, you may wonder, why haven't I done that yet? Well, this week is a bit different. I was invited to do occasional interviews on the podcast that got me started, which is the Just Go Bike podcast. Coming up, you will hear my interview with Joni Green Musel. Her dad spent about 15 years as the Ragbri director, and Joni shares some good stories about her dad, Greeny. You can check out JustGoBike.net for more Ragbri related episodes. So here's my interview with Joni. Enjoy. You're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast, aka Murph here. And of course, you know, the Just Go Bike Podcast is where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it, with tales from all across the nation. Come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. This week is all about Greenie. Jim Green served as Ragbri director for 15 years. He passed away in June of 2019, and I was lucky enough to sit down and interview his daughter, Joni Musel. We talked about Ragbri and all things Greenie. Now, we did this interview way before we even knew COVID-19 existed and before the term social distancing was even a thing. Boy, do I miss those days. Anyway, that's why we mention we're face-to-face and also why we talk about a few events that are now canceled or postponed. So with that said, here is my interview with the great Joni Musel. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Just Go Bike podcast. This week is hosted by me, a.k.a. Murph, and I'm so happy to be back. You can also, of course, catch me on my own podcast called the Murphology Podcast. So with me today is Joni Green Musel. Hey, Joni. Hello, Miss Murph. How are you? I am so great. Good. So we're good a- to see you. I know. I was going to say we're actually sitting face to face, and I love that because a lot of the podcasts I do are over the phone. So this is so fun. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, of course, listeners don't know if we know each other, but guess what? We, we do. do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to think when I was coming here. How long it's been? It feels like it's been 20 years, but I bet you it's been five? Four or five. The first pre-ride Yeah, that we did, was that 2015? Was it? I think so. Okay, so then we're coming up on five, five years. years. Yeah. Correct. Um, and so pre-ride is actually the Ragbri route inspection team. And literally, it's a small crew that rides the entire Ragbri route on their bikes, just like regular rag bry. So on Sunday, we do the Sunday route. On Monday, we do the Monday route, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I believe we met for the very first time as everyone was gathered, <laughs> you know, packing up the vans, putting our bikes on the bike racks. And I guess it was fate, but we ended up in the very back of this like 15 passenger van. And so uh, we had a blast. I think like within minutes, we were yakking. best friends and yakking it along. And gosh, what a fun week that was. I don't think either one of us know a stranger, so it does not surprise <laughs> yeah, me. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Well, uh, let's get into what we're going to talk about today, which um, I did say that your name was Joni Green Muzel. You are on the podcast because you are an amazing person. Oh, I thank you. But also you have an amazing history with Ragbri, and that's what I wanted to get into today. Perfect. If that's okay with that you. That is absolutely okay. fine. But before we do that, do you have a, a couple places um, here in Iowa that you love to ride your bike, or maybe you go outside of the state? We really like the High Trestle Trail. Oh, yes. We do love that one. Yeah. We just moved back to Des Moines four years ago, and part of it was because there are so many awesome trails Mm -hmm. around Des Moines. Mm -hmm. You can literally get anywhere on a bicycle. Yeah. With a bar stop in between. (laughs) (laughs) And the nice thing about, I don't live in Des Moines, but I've biked many times. They have really nice wayfinding signs. Correct. So as long as you kind of know where you're going, you can get to an intersection. And by intersection, I mean where a trail turns into two trails. It'll say, you know, Confluence Brewery this way or the Capitol this way. And then you'll, you know, make the right choice based on on which way you're going whatever yes. you're doing yeah. yes so it is great the Des Moines yeah. I don't know if it's Des Moines or the state they've done a great job 
at putting money into their bike trails. I completely agree. And on a side note, you mentioned the High Trestle Trail or the High Trestle Bridge. I believe that we have been on the High Trestle Bridge together a couple times. Oh, yes. We have done the pigtails three times. Yeah. And if you don't know the pigtails, you should look it up and go. That yes. That is a fabulous ride. Yes, uh, it is. For women. Yes. And if you've never ridden a bike before and want to get into the sport, it's a great place to start. And it's coming up this year, uh, mid-May. Mid- I don't recall the date for sure, but either. it's sometime in mid-May. Yeah, I think the registration is open right oh, now, okay. but I, yeah, I don't know the date for sure. Well, tell everybody to Google it after you're done listening to this. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of bike do you ride? I have a Cannondale. Oh, very nice. Yes, her name yeah. is Black Betty. Black Betty. And so I'm going to sh- guess she's black. black. Yes. <laughs> And she is a very light, awesome bike. Yeah. And don't you have electronic shifters? I do. Yes. Your bike, I'm always jealous when I'm riding with you because it's, you know, my bike is steel and weighs, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of pounds. But I swear you can lift my bike up with one finger. Yeah. It's so light. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Do you have any early memories of biking? Like, do you remember your first bike or do you remember your first bike crash or anything like that? Both. My first bike was the yellow banana seat bike that Santa left us. I have two sisters, and he left all three of us yellow banana seat bikes. Wait, the same bike? You all have the same bike? We all had the same bike sitting underneath the Christmas tree that year. How cool is that? I know, I know. So that was our earliest. Um, After that, my dad um, was the circulation director at the Des Moines Register. Oh, okay. And he started a thing called um, Inspector Greeny, okay. where he would take paper carriers, if they had perfect service, did this, did that, they could go on RAGBRAI with him for a week. Oh, fun. So he was out doing this RAGBRAI, uh, you know, getting kids in shape, and I'm like, all right, <laughs> fine. Well, our first argument was, I said, I wouldn't wear a helmet until Liz Claiborne made helmets. Oh. <laughs> because I was very into Liz Claiborne in that year. <laughs> And he finally got me into a helmet. I'm like, okay, but no spandex. You know, this is 80s. Yeah. And he's like, okay, fine. And then we were on a training ride. We lived on the east side of Des Moines, and we would go out to Bondurant and back. We'd ride to Casey's, get a Diet Coke and a Milky Way, and ride back. And I wanted him to teach me how to shift because Mm. I wasn't sure of shifting. So we're doing it, and I'm rounding a corner, and I'm looking down to shift because at that time your gears were all oh, on, on the, the frame. frame. Oh, sure. So I was looking down to see where I was at, and I hit gravel, and I went down. Oh. And Dad was ahead of me, and he turned back around, and he's like, thank God you had a goddamn <laughs> helmet on because your head bounced on the concrete 20 times. Oh, no. Before he said, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, priorities. <laughs> priorities, yes. So, oh, my god. So, yes, that was my earliest memory of riding bike. Wow. <laughs> and that's a great memory. And I also, my first bike was also banana seat, <gasps> but it was red, white, and blue, and it was called Miss America. Oh. I know. I and know. Mine was just a banana. And it had the ape. Yep. Ape, you got, what do you call those? Ape, ape hangers? A, yeah. Yep. So That's what I had, too. Pretty I'm sweet bike. Look for a picture. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, listeners, you mentioned your dad, Greeny. Listeners may or may not know that you are a RAGBRAI celebrity. Oh, so, so famous. <laughs> not. Because your dad used to run RAGBRAI. Correct. So he was, um, I believe the official title is director? Director of RAGBRAI, Of RAGBRAI. Yes. So he was literally responsible for figuring out the route, you know, making sure that it was safe and getting people from town to town every time. And I will note that he did pass away back in June of last year, actually within days when my father passed away. Correct. So it was a, a really tough time for both of us. So we need to give a shout out to our dads, dads. right now. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, this year, the people who now are in charge of RAGBRAI decided to dedicate the 2020 RAGBRAI to him. It's amazing. Holy we are crap, that's amazing. So honored. Yeah. yeah. My dad was very humble, yeah. and when he was alive, he wanted no attention. Sure. He liked to blend into the background, but I think this is an honor. I think he's smiling down on it. Yeah. That it's dedicated to him and the, I don't want to say sport, but the ride he loved. Sure, yeah. And dedicating it to him. Yeah. 
And so he, uh, at least I only knew him as Greeny. Mm -hmm. Were you ever called Greeny as a kid? No, No. I have a different nickname. I don't know if I can say it on here. He gave us all (laughs) nicknames. So, yes, he was just Greeny. Oh, my. I was Boney, Joni Boney, because I was premature. Oh, okay. So I was in the NICU, so I was Boney. Okay. Well, think back to, I don't even know what years your dad was in charge of Ragbrat. I know he had been retired for probably 16, 17 years. Mm -hmm. So anyway, maybe take us back to your memories of him running Ragbri. You like what was it like back then? It was a lot different mm-hmm. <laughs> because his staff was incredibly small. Um, him and my mom ran the staff, and there was maybe fifteen people. And now I think Ragbri staff has forty to sixty wow. people in there. So we were all very involved. Um, This is way before, like, computers were big and cell phones were big. The constant joke on Ragbury back then is, who's got the keys? They always lost keys. (laughs) Some truck (laughs) keys got lost every year. So my mom finally got smart and made a completely duplicate set of everything. Oh, nice. So she always had a spare key for everything. Yeah. And, like, hotel lists. You know, Ragbury does hotels for their staff and for any special guest. And my mom hated the hotel list but because she would sit at the kitchen table and know this person is coming this reporter's not coming this person's coming this person's not coming and doing all of that and it probably rotated every day Mm -hmm. i mean somebody's going to be on for two days somebody's going to be on back to the phone comment were there phones back then no they had radios oh so they were like cbs cbs yeah yeah in the very beginning they were cbs and then we were so excited when my dad got his first bag phone, oh, like two or three years <laughs> into it. And then after the bag phone, it went to the big phone with yeah, the little with the black big, handle. But, so I, that's mind-blowing. I mean, anybody who does rag bry knows that when you get into real small towns, you know, you have really limited cell service. But I can't imagine trying to be in charge of all of that with such minimal <laughs> ability to communicate. Absolutely. The first year my husband and I rode, he gave us one of the radios just to put on our bikes. Oh, okay. So that he kind of had an idea what was going on the road. Yeah. Because he had no idea what was happening along the route unless he was there. So we would just call and communicate with him once in a while. Hey, we're here. Yeah. Hey, we're here. Yeah. And, okay, everything going okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you, okay, so you mentioned, you know, having a walkie t- or a whatever, a radio radio on your bike but what role did you play when you said you know you had to be involved back before your riding before then we did everything and not me my sisters anybody that lived on our street (laughs) you know there's a lot that goes into getting all the vehicles ready getting all the radios ready so we would meet at our house or we would go out to the farm they call it and load the ambulances load everything with all the equipment so all that went through our house Um, the one thing we always laugh about was counting money back then there was no real audit well audit trail by the des moines register they trusted rag my mom and dad (laughs) so at the end of every night we would just sit in my mom's hotel room and count money and stash it away and at the end of rag we'd all sit at our kitchen table with tens of thousands of dollars and just count the money and give it to the account the next day so that's what we all did we would unload semis we would load semis um you know even later in the years as my kids were there i think the last time uh, might have been in sioux city or lamar's where it's starting this year the somebody broke down so my one daughter drove apart from one place to the next place oh my so i mean that's (laughs) just what it is you just pick up and help wherever you can yeah so then knowing that, okay, so every year RAGBRAI happens the last week of July. So it, during that time frame, were you always like dreading it <laughs> or looking forward to it? or Because it was probably fun family time. It was. But I, it had to have been stressful on certain times. I, I think the most stress went on poor mother. Sure. <laughs> Ma, as we yeah. all call her. Ma got the brunt of it, and, and it was very stressful. But she, she's good at evening us all out. So <laughs> yeah. that's where she kept it all calm. Do you remember any good stories, like, off the top of your head? Uh, well, there's a few good stories, but all of them really relate to how good and honest Iowans are. Ah. Uh, there's the one story of a man that day one or day two lost his billfold. So my dad gave him 100 bucks and said, come back, you know, we'll see if your billfold shows up and 
be there. Well, he came back like three days later, and his billfold was there full of cash. Holy. Nobody took any of the cash. They just turned it in. How cool is well, that? Well, that gentleman lives in Pennsylvania, I believe. And every year since then, if he doesn't ride, he has called my dad. Oh, Every wow. year to say, Greeny, I'm on my way back. Yeah. How are you doing? Well, this year, so my dad died in June, and the ride was in July. And so he didn't know my dad had passed away. So he called the phone, home phone, and he said, is Jim Green there? My mom said, well, who is this? And he said, well, this is Steve. I always call him at Ragbri and tell him this. And this year I was on my way to Ragbri, and I got the flu, and I went home, and I was oh. hoping to see him. And my mom said, well, I'm sorry to tell you he passed away. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just great stories like that of the connections that dad made throughout the years. Also with your dad, he was key to the birth of what's called the dream team. Is correct. that correct? That is correct. So you mentioned earlier that kids who were paper, let's say paper carriers, <laughs> um, they got to ride Ragbri mm -hmm. with him. So I'm assuming that he had that vision way back when of I want to get more kids on bikes or kids doing something good. So how did the dream team came to be? It actually, it started with that. So yes, he did that before he was the director when he was the um, circulation manager at the register mm -hmm. but then i believe after he started ragbri he went down south somewhere and they had a dream team but it was the opposite it was very um, educated high class students wealthy students who got to go and be on this dream team of biking oh okay. and dad brought it to iowa him and forest ridgeway and i can't remember the other man's uh he was the principal at hoover high school started it and they said we want to do this but we want kids that need help okay that need that mentor that needs somebody in their life um the one thing my dad has did his entire life was mentor mm -hmm. whether it be through the church and all of the altar boys mm -hmm. and uh dream team and this and that and the paper carriers he just wanted to be a mentor mm -hmm. to everybody so he started the dream team so then what exactly is the dream team? Because you said, you know, more for disadvantaged kids or kids that needed some mentoring. But what does that mean? Like they get chosen and then what happens? They can apply. Anybody can apply. It's out there um, on their site, the dream team. And you can apply to do this. What that means is they already started, I think, in February training and they train three days a week. So you're training them physically, you're being their mentor, you're talking to them, you're doing everything with them from um, February until July. And they have to make every ride and every hill in between May and July. Wow. And then if they make it, then they get to go on RAGBRAI. They get ride all week, everything is paid for, they get a per diem amount for food on the road, and then they have a cook that cooks in camp at night. And then if they complete the whole ride, they get their bike. And they oh, get, they to, get keep, to keep the they bike. They get to keep the bike. Forest uh, Ridgeway at Bike World is a great supporter of this program and helps them do that. And they get all the kids on bikes and get them going. That is incredible. Yes. And speaking of incredible, so at the Ragbri Route announcement party, which took place at the end of January, and for those who don't know what that is, that's a big party where the director of RAGBRAI, who is now Dieter Drake, he announces where the route's going to go because every year RAGBRAI has a different route. Anyway, the Green family presented the Dream Team with a big fat check. Yes, we gave them a check from the register in the amount of $10,000 in my dad's name to help. Um, I think they said that would help 10 kids go on the ride this year is what it amounts to and I just think that's awesome that is so cool it is so awesome and it is a truly great program led by great people yeah I if I lived in Des Moines I would for sure be a volunteer because a a great excuse to mm -hmm. get on your bike and to be able to mentor oh I just love the program yeah last year so at the end of Ragbury then I'm with my mom we're sitting at her kitchen table and if you've never been on Ragbrae, the last day is when a lot of teams ride in together. Mm -hmm. And they're just, it's spectacular to see. And we just happened to click on the Dream Teams page as they all started coming in together. The mentors <sighs> and the kids and mom and I just sat there and bawled. And yeah. They did a shout out to us. Jury did a shout out. Well, hi, Ma, you're watching. And then my sister's texting, oh, my God, now I am too. We're oh all crying together. Gosh. So 
It's an awesome, awesome program. Yeah, it really is. And I'm glad it's continuing. Definitely. All these years. So, Um, well, fast forward to after your dad retired from his position at RAGBRAI. Um, did you and the family still participate in the ride after that? Yeah, that's when we started doing pre-ride together. Okay, got it. Yep, so he, after he retired, he still did pre-ride for quite a few years mm-hmm. where he would go on it and help pre-ride and TJ and the whole team uh, do the pre-ride and kind of help him orchestrate all of that. So he did that until he felt like his health couldn't mm-hmm. take it anymore. Mm-hmm. So I remember the one year, I don't know if you were there, Murph, that he'd had his stroke and that next July, I brought him up to Fort Dodge. I said, your people need you. <laughs> yes, I and, was there. And he came up and he <laughs> rang his cowbell. Yes. And that's what his people need him. Yes, that was <laughs> that was very memorable. Yes. And you also brought him uh, to pre-ride. Uh, we all just sat in the hotel one afternoon or yeah. morning. I can't recall what, but it was awesome. Yep, just yeah. talking to him. And I yes. don't think he stopped smiling the entire time. So. <laughs> No, I don't think so. Yeah. So, uh, and you still, at least the since I've known you, you do jump on the Ragbri route for a while, but you're kind of living in luxury, right? Because you like stay in hotels and <laughs> uh, you get a shower every day and <laughs> you get to feel air conditioning. Is that all true? That is all true. <laughs> it was really great when dad was still the director in yeah. the road. Oh, gosh. Because then my mom would get my hotel key and go turn my air on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yes, and so being a, what did, a legacy, yeah. you know, we ask if we can have that luxury. We pay for it all ourselves. Sure, you know, it yeah. comes out of us, but if they just reserve a spot for us, oh, at least awesome. then we didn't. So, yes, I'm truly not. Wait, I take that back. Okay. Our very first year, TAG insisted we camped in um, Sergeant Bluff, I believe, one night, the night before it started dumbest idea I was gonna say what I don't know what was he thinking I don't know you know tag you ask him (laughs) what were you thinking making your wife sleep in a tent exactly yeah (laughs) so now we're at RAGBRAI 48 and how has RAGBRAI changed in your opinion oh it has gotten so much bigger Mm -hmm. and with bigger comes lots of change Mm -hmm. Um, they brought in some corporate people and sponsorships have been great you know Mm -hmm. it really got a lot more people i think interested in cycling sure you know shields shout out to matt fippen who who has done a great job of getting people on bikes and being that sponsor and you know all of his is it swift you do that too zift zwift Zwift, yes all that stuff i think he does a great job promoting that yeah and i think that's really helped too it's become a huge as i call it dog and pony show to move from town to town every day yeah and yeah. it's, it's just amazing to see. And I, um, my first RAGBRAI was in 97. So I don't know how many that is. It's hard to count. I don't know. <laughs> math is hard. Math is hard. I'm not a mathlete. But 20 um, some years. But I, you know, definitely agree with you on, on there have been lots of changes. And there are times when it seems like there's more people on RAGBRAI. But also I feel like they get spread out. But it also, uh, I do RAGBRAI differently. You know, there was a time when... I was on the team bus and we, you know, stopped in every town and anyway. <laughs> and then I was also part of Ragbri when I wanted to get to the host town early enough. You know, I wanted to be light out. I wanted to see people. And so, you know, my experience is definitely um, different each year. But I think the thing that doesn't change is the hospitality of the towns. Totally agree. It's just unbelievable. And I'm sure that legacy started, you know, even before Greeny was running the show of, you know, you treat all those towns with lots of respect and give them all the tools to have a successful Mm -hmm. day. If you think about it, some of these towns are less than 5,000 people, maybe even less than 1,000, and they've got this swarm of bikes that come in and leave. Well, and that, where my experience is different on that also, is I lived in a small town in northwest Iowa, a town of 1,500 people. Shout out to Alton. 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 And um, Ragbri came through there two or three times while we were there, and you're exactly right. We had 1,500 people in the town to serve 10,000 people. Yeah. No, 20,000 people because it was usually the first day. Mm. And there's much more. And the thing that Dad always told us was work together as a community. Mm -hmm. Because, Joni, you belong to the Catholic Church. Joni, you belong to the Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. Joni, you do this, you do that. You can't bake 
and do everything for everybody. Right. <laughs> Come together and be a community. Mm -hmm. Do it as a community and figure out where the profits go. So for Alton, in one day that was 15, 20 years ago, or longer than that, we made $20,000 in four hours. Wow. What other small town fundraiser yeah. can bring $20,000 of outside money yes. into that kind of a community? Right. And what, and a lot of those towns advertise, you know, they're getting a new fire engine or they're mm -hmm. building a new community center or a park. And it just makes it, I mean, I don't ever feel like prices are high no. on Ragbri. I mean, you can get a beer for whatever, two yep. or three bucks. But knowing that you're spending money in this town is going to something cool. I mean, Correct. it's not going to a corporation somewhere. I mean, it's literally staying in the town and going to, you know, like the somebody's church right. activity or Girl Scout thing. And what you can do then is just put it all in a pool and have your town vote. 20% of the profit goes here, 10% goes oh, here, 10% nice. goes here, yeah. so that everybody gets a little bit of it. Oh, I want to so, go on Ragbri right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> we got a few more months. Yeah, a few months. As we look outside and see snow. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so any advice? You've done Ragbri a gazillion times as both a bike rider and an employee <laughs> and forced labor and as a volunteer, I'm guessing. Yeah. So any advice you would give to somebody who wants to do Ragbri, thinking about doing Ragbri, doesn't think they can do Ragbri? Anybody can do Ragbri. Yeah. And the way I always tell people who are amazed that I've done it is you have to remember it's in chunks. You're not riding 400 miles in one day. In literally an 80-mile day, you're riding 12 miles, then mm -hmm. 10 miles, yep. then 15 miles. So if you break that down mentally, the biggest thing is the mental challenge to yeah. get over preparing for it. The second big thing is training. And mm -hmm. I'm not really – I am talking about your legs, but I'm talking about your arse. Yes, <laughs> you your need, booty. Your booty. <laughs> you need time in the saddle. Right. Otherwise, you can't. Uh, my husband made a fatal mistake one year. He changed his bike seat. <gasps> The, right day, before, right? the day it started. Oh, tag. And, oh, tag. It was a bad day. He could not even ride the next day. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got to train on your saddle, ride that same saddle, and move on. And there are, I'm sure everybody knows Google. <laughs> it's uh, on the interwebs. But you can literally Google uh, training plans for Ragbri, and there are all kinds of specific, here's how many miles you should do. Um, and you're totally right, Joni. It is all about getting your body physically ready more so mm -hmm. than just the muscles. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And hills. Do lots of hills before you go because I remember riding with my dad one of the years I actually rode with him before he was a director. And we were riding with a good friend of ours, Doug Bates from Atlanta, no, Tennessee, sorry. And we're riding along, and I said, Doug, can I divorce my father? Because he told me <laughs> Iowa was flat, and he's a liar. <laughs> he said, I can emancipate you. And I go, okay, we are working on that when we get to the next town. <laughs> so, yes, lots of hill miles. Oh, that is true. Iowa is not flat. No, it's, it's not. not. It, you know, if you just drive on Interstate 80 to get through Iowa, that's not a good representation no. of the terrain here. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, Joni, thank you so much for being on the Just Go Bike podcast and being uh, my friend and letting me ride my bike next to you. Yay! Well, I'm always behind you. You're oh. a little faster than me, <laughs> but, you know, it's all good. Yeah. Well, this has been a blast, so thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Murph. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? We should do a quick shout out to your mom because she, oh. she is the one that keeps the glue everybody what, how, what's the saying the glue that binds us all together yes that is ma so, green shout out to ma green and thanks she for, has been fantastic in all of this yeah and thanks for making cool daughters Kids. and having a cool husband yeah and she's the one that held us all together so yes it's all good all right well thanks joni <laughs> yep Well, listeners, that's it for this week. Check out morphologypodcast.com for more of my interviews. And thank you, Joni, for sharing your Ragbri adventures and the great memories of Greenie here on the Just Go Bike podcast. I'll leave you with this quote from the unwritten book of morphology. This quote comes from Michelle Obama. Your success will be determined by your own confidence and fortitude. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs>